Emma sound system. My career as tuba sound system, I had a musical career before that, but uh, as tuba sound system, I, I used to have a partner called Lars, and uh, we would sort of ricochet into the whole techno scene because we made a track called Le Gin that, that was really big, and I think someone told me that up to this date it's still the most sold track on Beatport. And now you don't really sell music anymore, so I guess it stays that way. So that was a, a big track, it was sort of a crossover track. So it was also played in commercial radio, even though it didn't have any vocals or anything. And um, it uh, got us on the Get Physical label in Berlin, which uh, I have worked quite closely with over the years. And I also helped shaping their sound a bit, because now, before they didn't do any Afro, but after I started doing some Afro releases there, they are more and more focused on that. So I'm really happy and grateful to see that. So when people ask me what I play, I usually, I usually say Afro House, because that's the easy way to explain it. In reality, I don't like to paint myself in a corner and it doesn't need to to be something to do with Africa even. I'm just a little bit tired of that very standard tech housey beat that I've been hearing. I'm an old man now, so I've been hearing that my whole life. So I, I, I keep the kick, the steady kick around 120 but I like to have other rhythms with the hi-hats and the snares. And I also like some percussions and maybe some ethnic instruments or voices in there. But to call it Afro House as such is maybe not the, the right box to put it in, but it's the easiest answer. It's more than a decade now I've been going solo but I kind of miss working with people, so I try to do a lot of collaborations. On a personal level, when I make music, I can get inspired at any time, anywhere. And I use my phone to sing in the ideas that I have. When I open the program, I usually start with a beat. That's more how you work. Uh, on your computer but for me the melodic ideas come more when I'm walking around in places like this or I have some peace and quiet or in the middle of the night coming home from a club or so that's when uh, yeah the mobile phone has been a very useful tool for me to just sing and I'm not a great singer so sometimes <laughs> there's some horrible sounding ideas in there but often i can make sense of it and hopefully make something good about it uh, so i had the isiki radio show for like a year now and uh, it's been really great working with uh, ibiza live radio it's uh, exclusively there and it feels like a good home for us uh, we have the same spirit of things and to my surprise, um, I ask all my favorite artists to, to play there and most of them say yes. So it's been way easier than expected to get really amazing guest DJs to come and play. And um, it's been a great way to connect with people, me as well. So I, I didn't release much music yeah, during the pandemic. Uh, I actually took a break from making it as well. But it's been a couple of new things coming out lately. Um, it's a club in Zurich called Hive, and they also have a Hive label that is 10 years old. And they invited lots of uh, great artists to uh, contribute on a celebration. Um, for the 10 years anniversary and I contributed on an EP with uh, a guy called Mark Grabber from Croatia and 
it's called Kasika and it came out a week ago actually. So that one is quite nice, you can check it out. And the one I did before that, that's like a month ago, was actually uh, just released as an NFT only. So uh, you won't be able to hear it unless you go into record shop and, mm -hmm. and buy the NFT. But uh, it's, uh, I feel it's a little bit of a shame because it's a beautiful song. It's called Namakwai. I made it with my good friend Tone Def from India. And most probably I go back to India and work some more with that guy because I really like him. My next releases will come on Hisiki eventually, but I don't like to limit myself only there. Hisiki has its sound and Juma Sound System has its own sound. So I still want to release on other things as well. Yeah, I have a party can concept called Isiki, which is, uh, we try to unite different people to sort of bring something, how do you say it, like kind of back to the origins. We have a bit tribal feeling, we, we use decoration and we paint people's faces and we try to make it a little different than just a normal club night. So with these few tricks, we often feel that people blend and mingle a little bit more than usual. Feel we're all part of the same. And we also have uh, extra percussionists and musicians playing with the DJs. And we let the DJs circulate a bit instead of just playing straight two hours. Yeah, so the idea was to have a CKN sort of like a playground where you can... People can fill in this box what they like. It could be a small party in a bar or it could be a festival. And so far we have uh, done uh, the, the Siki parties kind of all over the world and it's we had it a bit like open source, meaning if people want to continue the party and doing it their own way, we let them do that. So, so far we had the Siki in uh, lots of places in Europe, like uh, Copenhagen and Berlin. We had it in South Africa, we had it in Mexico, in the United States, and quite a few parties in uh, India as well. So hopefully we're gonna continue some of those and uh, organically it will grow a bit. I'm uh, working on a label as well. We started a year ago, but now we're gonna turn things up a knob and we have some really great releases coming. The weird thing with, with music is we, we think that the harder and faster the music is, the more we dance. But, and, and my music is, is not the, the hardest. Uh, it, I play more groovy and often a little bit slower than uh, for what's usual for peak time. But actually we move more when the music is groovy and and leave a bit more space. So people think you dance more to hard techno, but it's actually the, the opposite. I think people move more to uh, party with Afro house than with hard techno, to be honest. A problem is I broke my kneecap last year, but it used to be going all the way down. Uh -huh. And now I'm a little limited. I'm working to get my strength back up. Okay. Climbed, no? Up. It's good for me. Good exercise. <laughs> Can see it in my face. <laughs> and we're getting a little tour de Ivisa on the yeah. way here. Yeah. Galleries or NFTs? I must say galleries. I, I like to yeah to have something physical. I'm, I'm still new to the whole NFT thing. I have to try it out, but it's still a bit weird to me. 
Cats or dogs? I would go with dogs because I'm allergic to cats, unfortunately. Now I'm on uh, USBs. I have over 5,000 vinyls, so I kind of come from vinyls. But I didn't use them much in the end. And now they're... Uh, actually, my little brother, he, he likes to, to use some of them, and I'm very happy about that. The rest is hidden down in a basement. It's not mountains or sea. I'm, I'm Norwegian, so I should say mountains, but sea is my element. If I can have a dip in the ocean, that's a good day for me. And uh, today I did. I even had a bit of a snorkel, so today is a good day. Open spaces or dark clubs? I think I become more and more an open space guy. I still like the dirty, intimate clubs, but I become a little bit of a burner. So I like I like the daytime parties, and uh, for the Seeky concept, the open air works really well. Like all the other DJs, I, I came to Ibiza to play a gig. I played at uh, Akrasha, at the old hippie market. And uh, it was a great night. I played with a couple of my friends, both called uh, Jesus Shoes. There's DJ Shoes Esteban from Madrid and the Rudolans label. And my friend uh, Shoes Fodar from Amnesia. Well, thank you, Ibiza Live Radio, for letting me have a show on your channel. And uh, it's been great working with you guys. Thanks for taking interest in me to uh, do this interview. And thank you for watching it and uh, letting me give you a quick little tour of the beautiful White Isle. I'm Juma Sound System, and you can listen to my show every second Thursdays. Six and seven.